Greetings, Facebook family and YouTube friends. Thank you for joining us once again. I hope that you've got your holiday shopping and everything out of the way. This time of year, we always hear people say, are you ready for Christmas? And I'm not sure if people really understand that God is asking us that same question, but not in the literal, physical sense of buying presents and putting up a tree. God is posing that question to every believer every year. Are you ready for Christmas? Because we can learn through the Christmas story, the time leading up to Jesus' birth. There's uh, many lessons, spiritual lessons, that we can learn from that time frame. And the main overall message is about change. So today's message is entitled, Keep the Change. And I hope it speaks to you because it's going to lay out uh, four points that I believe are crucial in the life of every believer, because those four points are the things that God leads us when he's working all things together for our good. Those four points is where God leads us to service for him. So I hope that you've got all your Christmas shopping and everything ready and you're ready for family and friends to come over. But more importantly, I'm hoping that this message will make you think about getting ready for Christmas, spiritually speaking. Thanks for watching. I'm Pastor Rob Johnson from Servant's Heart Worship Center in Columbia, Tennessee. If you don't have a church of your own and you're in this area, please come give us a try. We're growing and God is really moving in this place. So grab a cup of coffee and, and phone up a friend. Share this message with somebody that you know that could use a little bump or maybe they're spiritually down. Just Share. Use your technology to share the word. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching. The other day, I saw a taco truck, and I can't resist. Taco trucks are the devil for old Rob. I just love, I'm from California. I love me some tacos and burritos, and the raunchier, the crazier, the, the filthier the truck, the better, because that's where the good stuff is. Amen. And I was waiting for my, my turn in line, and, and the guy ahead of me pays for his food, and, and he tells the guy there, just keep the change. And then he looked at me, and he goes, it's Christmas. And I thought to myself, you know, that'll preach. Keep the change. It's Christmas. So I started praying, and, and I was thinking about change. And I remember when these young people when we counseled Logan and Dakota and Luke and Cheyenne before they got married. I said, one day a baby's going to come. And I love that Christmas song, A Baby Changes Everything, because that's true. It was true in the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the story of Jesus, but it's also true in real life. When a young couple has a baby, before they have that baby, I always say, get ready for your lives to change because a baby do, truly does change everything. You get a brand new life complete with, with new priorities, new goals, new values, new commitments. It's a brand new life. But some people don't like change. That's why there's a lot of broken families out there. Some people don't like change. They think, I like my life the way it is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's become so common in the vernacular, especially in, a, in America, that we all know how to finish that sentence. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Some people don't like change. Other people, they don't mind making changes. They like to see changes in their circumstances or their situations. But when it comes to making changes to the way they think, and the way they believe and the way they feel, they resist. And sometimes they even resent making changes to themselves. But I'm telling you, God is all about change. God wants to see us change. Because he knows that the changes that he makes in our lives are going to be changes that are going to have eternal value. Amen? 
And I was thinking about the time leading up to the Christmas story, because the Christmas story in itself, Jesus' birth is all about change. The world was about to change. A baby does change everything. Jesus changed everything. But in the year leading up to that, that's what I want to focus on today, is the year leading up to that very first Christmas, because that too was all about change. It was about major changes in the lives of a teenage girl named Mary and a young man named Joseph. They were about to embark on the greatest journey of their life. God was about to put both of their lives through some major changes. They were already uh, engaged to be married. When an angel of the Lord came first to Mary and then to Joseph and revealed to them that some changes are coming. So while I'm preaching this today, I pray that we all ask ourselves, I've been asking myself all week, are there changes that God wants to make in your life this Christmas season? Are there things in your life that you've just been kind of rolling through year after year? Plans that have gone unfulfilled that God wants to bring into fruition this year. So I pray that throughout this message, you'll be asking yourself the question and asking the Lord, Lord, what changes do you want to make in my life this Christmas season? I want to start with Joseph. You know, can you imagine... Can you imagine how it must have been for that young man? In that place, during that time, his wife comes home, she's with child, he knows it's not his. And now he has to go and explain to his friends and his family that his wife is pregnant, but she got pregnant by God. How do you sell that? In any culture, in any time period, right? So Joseph was going to have to Except some changes in his life. He was going to be faced with things that would forever change his life and forever change the world. And the main point that I want to make today is there's a four-step process in keeping the change. If I had to title this message, it would be to keep the change. There's a four-step process in keeping the change that God wants to make in our lives. If you have your Bibles, I hope you do. Turn to Matthew chapter 1. We're going to read verses 18 through 20 to start. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your word this morning. And God, I pray. I reinforce what I prayed earlier, God, that you would prick every heart here. That the soil the different calibers of soil around each and every heart, some as hard as rock, others fertile and moist and ready to receive. But that you would prepare every heart to receive your word this morning. I love you and I praise you in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay. Matthew 1, 18 through 20 says this. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody, if you, if you can, underline that in your Bible. She became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. I want us to hold right there for just a second and notice that Joseph had made up his mind. He had made the decision. He'd come to this conclusion. He had done all the math. He'd summed up everything. And he decided to break the engagement. But he wanted to do it quietly because he still loved Mary. He didn't want to embarrass her or 
bring disgrace to her, her, to her life. So he'd set his mind on breaking the engagement. And the lesson there for us is that before God can change us, before he can change our life and our heart, he first has to change our mind. Amen? Joseph had made his decision based on all of his human reasoning, all of the soulish human thinking and reasoning that he could muster to make a decision. And that's what he based his decision on. And God knew it. He says, I've decided that this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is when I'm going to do it. This is how it's going to be. But watch this. Here's where God steps in, in verse 20. Verse 20 says, as he considered this, as he was considering, thinking with all of his human reasoning, as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, <clears throat> for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Joseph is now faced with something that he was going to have to accept. It was going to require, and I'm sure it was hard for him, to get past all of his human reasoning, just as it is for you and I, when God puts stuff on our heart that doesn't make any sense. But Joseph was going to have to get past all of that because he knew that the Lord had called him for a purpose and that he would have to bear and accept something new in his life. This is the first step out of four that I want to talk about today in keeping the change that God makes in our lives. The first step is accepting something that maybe to our mind we don't understand. Maybe it, to our mind it, it seems foolish or it seems crazy or beyond us. But the first step is to accept something that maybe we don't even have any control over. It's a lot easier to accept and make changes on our own terms. When we orchestrate the change, when we're in charge of all the changes, it's a lot easier for us to accept than it is to accept something that God puts on our heart that we didn't get a vote on. I remember when I first got, when I first got my cell phone. I was, talk about change. I didn't like change. I like my old flip phone. Okay. And so when we were building this church, it was only a couple of years ago, I still had my flip phone and I couldn't text. You remember the old way of texting? You had to go through all three numbers and it was just time consuming. And, and I would see Linda on there just brrr, having conversations and breezing through it. So I went and got myself a smartphone. Well, little did I know that there's some feature on smartphone called word check it's spell check and it's word check so i was having some trouble if some some of you well, most of you were here remember remember the lady down there at the, the city that was giving us all the grief in in the building process and i was having this conversation with her back and forth and and the lord was teaching me a lot about patience and and being a witness and and so i would she would frustrate me and rub me the wrong way and i'm texting her back and forth one time and and she says okay i'm gonna i'll go talk to my people about this or whatever and and i said okay and i texted her keep me posted well, I didn't put the space, because I was just learning my phone. I didn't put that space between me and posted. And I didn't even look, because I was driving. This was before the law, y'all. <laughs> so I'm driving along, and I said, keep me posted. A few minutes later, doo -doo -doo. and I look, and it says, what are you talking about? And it was her. And I thought, what? What do you mean, what am I talking about? What's so hard about keep me posted. I look back at my text and my automatic word find, because I missed the space in between me and posted, turned my text and changed, made a change to my text that said, okay, keep menopause. <laughs> and given the, the circumstances and situation, 
I'm like, no, no. And I'm telling my phone, that's not what I meant. And I'm trying to call her and her number's busy. And, it, I, I try, and then I pull over and I'm trying to explain it in a text. And I don't know how to explain what just happened. I want to be in control of the changes to every text that I send. Amen? This is what Joseph is being faced with in this scripture. There was a change in his life, coming to his life, that he would have to accept that he had no say in. An angel of the Lord came and told him the plan. The plan had already been set into motion. So Joseph had to accept this plan that God had already set into motion. That's another thing that we need to ask ourselves today. Maybe there's something that God has already set into motion in your life. Maybe there's a plan or a gift that he has for you that you can't see. Maybe it's a task or an appointment that he has that you are, aren't fully aware of and maybe you're confused on. This season, this Christmas season, as we go through, let's ask ourselves, Lord, every day when we're fresh in the morning, say, God, what is it you have for me today? I want to be clear on what the Lord is calling me to do. Maybe he wants us to accept something that to our mind doesn't seem fair or logical. Maybe he wants us to accept having to deal with, in a situation with a limitation or a disability that others don't have to deal with, but we do. Linda and I both lost our dads around Christmas time. And I know that first Christmas. I was questioning God, why? And I had to learn to accept that empty seat. At the table for, Christ for Christmas dinner. That was a tough one. I know some of you are going through that now. To accept that someone's gone and they're not coming back. And we won't see Him until we get to glory. But whatever it is, I believe that this is what Joseph was having to deal with. Accepting something that he didn't fully understand. He was having to accept the change and keep the change. And... I guess what I'm trying to say is for you and I as believers, sometimes it's very hard to accept the change and not get a voice in affecting it. You know what I'm saying? So Joseph had to accept. He had to have faith in God. It says he was a righteous man. He knew God, so he had faith in God. That's where we need to be. We need to have faith in our Lord saying, okay, God, I don't know why this is happening, I don't know what your plan is, but I'm going to stand on the promises in your word. And your word tells me that you know the plans that you have for me and they're for my good, not my destruction. And that your hand is working all things together for my good. So God, I'm going to stand on your word and I'm going to accept what you're allowing me to walk through, the storm, the trial. I'm going to accept this because I know that your hand is leading me through this for a reason. It's part of the journey. This is where Joseph was. He knew that God had orchestrated everything and that God's plan was much bigger than he was. He understood God. He knew God. When an angel of the Lord came down, he knew that he had been selected for a purpose. And he took it very seriously. And he decided, even though I don't understand this, I'm going to accept this. So the acceptance is the first step in keeping the change that God brings into our life. But there's a second step too that Joseph had to take. He not only had to accept the change, but he had to obey the changes. He had to be obedient to what God was telling him to do. So he had to accept something and then he had to obey something. 
and take Mary as his wife and to stand by her through everything that was going to come and follow through with the plan that God was orchestrating. Let's look at, at Matthew 1, 21 through 23. This is what the angel told Joseph. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He didn't even get a say in what to name his son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Aren't you glad God's with us? Amen. I'll tell you what. He's far above us in every way. God can be everywhere at the same time. And yet, He's right here. The Holy Spirit of God dwells within us. He's everywhere. He's orchestrating our lives. He's working all things together for our good. And yet, He's right here in our heart. He's with us comforting us through the worst storms of our life. And I believe what the word says is that he is also rejoicing with us when all of the good things in life happen. So he's comfort us, comforting us when we're grieving. And he's rejoicing with us when we prosper in every point in between. This is the God that we serve. Amen? Now let's look at verse 24. Verse 24 says... When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. When Joseph woke up, he did what God wanted him to do. I believe that we as believers need to wake up spiritually. Because I believe there's a lot of Christians, a lot of good people around the world, especially in this country, who have gone to sleep spiritually speaking. And God is wanting us to wake up. He's calling us to move into his purpose. Amen? Amen? So when Joseph woke up, he did everything God wanted him to do, and he took Mary as his wife. Ridicule and all. Gossip and all. Shame and all. Questions and all. He did what God wanted him to do when he woke up. This is the second step that we have to go through if we want to keep the change that God makes in our lives. We have to learn to obey what God is calling us to do. It's not enough just to hear the calling. That's the difference between hearers of the word and doers of the word. James said, show me your faith. Through your works. He says, I'll show you my, my faith through my works. This is what God is calling us to do. Just like he was calling Joseph to do. It wasn't enough just to accept the change. He had to obey. He had to follow it through. Putting foot to faith. And do what God was calling him to do. So our second step in keeping the change that God makes in our life. Is to learn to obey. Even if it's something that we find hard to accept and hard to understand. We need to obey and trust God. Maybe he's calling you to let go of something that's had a hold on you. Maybe you allowed something back into your life and God's saying this season, this Christmas season, it's time for you to let go of the things that I know are harmful to you that are going to kill you. Maybe God's calling you to pick something back up that you dropped. Maybe it's a calling, a ministry, or, or, or something that, that maybe you, you know when you got the call and you accepted the change and you walked in that, but maybe you set it down at some point and God's saying, this is the season for you to pick back up what you let go of because maybe you got tired and frustrated and you let go of it. Maybe he wants you to, to offer Forgiveness to somebody who thinks they don't owe you an apology and they've never asked you for forgiveness. Maybe God's calling you to forgive and make the first move in tearing down that wall between you. Can I get an amen on that? When it comes to our relationship with God, 
we don't have to understand fully to obey immediately. Let's do what Joseph did. Let's wake up. Say, all right, God, you got this. Help me to follow. Help me to accept. Help me to learn. Move me along the way. But I'm accepting this challenge from you because I know that it's your call and you're going to walk me through it. So, Lord, let's do this. Because I believe you can do all things. Sometimes these things can seem like a, a, an inconvenience. <clears throat> I know when God called me into the ministry, it seemed like a huge inconvenience thinking at it in the natural, soulish thoughts. It was like, whoa, whoa, I'm, I'm doing this over here. How can I do that? And God says, oh, no, no, that over there. Yeah, all that's going to go. Yeah, but I got all these friends. No, no, all those friends, they got to go. Woo! Because they're not bringing anything into your life of any value. And it seemed like an inconvenience at the time. But I said, okay, I don't understand, but I'm going to do it. And the Lord walked me through it. And this is what he does with every single one of us. Maybe he's calling us to walk away from something or pick something back up. God is moving us. If it seems like an inconvenience or an interruption to your life, I can tell you firsthand testimony that those times that that happened in my life turned out to be the greatest moves of my life. They were the greatest invitation from God to experience him on a deeper and more personal level. Amen? This is what was happening with Joseph. But what about Mary? Joseph was a trooper for sure. But Joseph didn't have to go through morning sickness on the back of a donkey in 120 degree heat. Joseph's ankles didn't swell. Joseph didn't go pear-shaped. You know what I'm talking about? Joseph was a trooper for sure, but Joseph didn't have to push a human being out of his body. Joseph didn't have to give birth to something. So let's talk about Mary. Because I believe that Mary had to deal a lot more with acceptance and obedience than Joseph did. They both, it was both powerful in their lives and they both had their own issues. But in Mary's life, I think she had to deal with a lot more. Let's look at Luke 1, 28 and 29. This kind of gives us a glimpse into Mary's personality. She spoke her mind, that's for sure. Luke 1, 28 and 29. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Now check this out. Verse 29. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Mary's confused and disturbed. I, I get the confused part. You know, you're sitting there, la da 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 da, and bam, there's an angel of the Lord pops into the room telling, that you're, telling you that you're highly favored in God's eyes and God's got, got something that he wants you to do. I could see that. It was a little confusing, but what about the disturbed part? Let's look at verse 30 and 31. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. In other words, Mary, you're going to have to give birth to something. Joseph had to accept, and he had to obey but Mary had to do, do those things and more. She had to take that third step and give birth to something. This is the third step for you and I. The third step in keeping the change that God wants to make in our life is to give birth. Be willing to give birth to what God has planted in you. To give birth to something that God has placed inside you that's starting to stir and maybe it's starting to move and kick a little because it wants to come out. Maybe there's something that you forgot about or gave up on years ago. A calling, a ministry, a commission that you knew came from God. And maybe God wants 
to turn your pain into a blessing. Maybe you're pregnant with pain. There's something that's been on your heart for years and you can't get over why God's allowing you to go through this thing and why God allowed you to go, have to go through this, this storm, this trial, and it's been growing inside you, maybe growing with resentment, maybe growing with uh, fear, but maybe God wants to take that pain that's growing inside you and bring it out in the form of a ministry. Maybe there's somebody that's going through something right now today that you went through a decade ago, and God wants to use you. He wants to use your testimony, your pain, to help somebody make it through the worst trial of their life. And God has been letting that pain grow inside you till the moment was just right to bring it out so He can use it for His glory to lead somebody else to Jesus. Amen? Can you see it? Maybe it's something in your life that God has planted. Maybe something in your heart, a gift, a talent, an ability. Something that you know is in your life that you've had. Maybe it's a love for playing music or you have a knack for this, a knack for that. I always say that's what started our JWT ministry on Wednesday nights. We wanted to teach kids the Bible through music to teach them what it means to worship God through music. Because if we stand up here and we try to entertain people, we have failed. Because this is all about ministry. This is all about worship. If you see us, we failed. Our job is to point you to the cross, to point you to Jesus. Amen? Sometimes God will plant a gift, a talent, an ability or something like that inside you and it's and it's been growing in you and now maybe it's starting to stir you've become pregnant with this gift or this talent maybe you've used it into the world for years and now it's starting to stir spiritually speaking and it's starting to kick a little bit and it's time that God wants to birth this thing into the world through you to lead others to him But you know, <laughs> I look around and I know some of you. Scott, you're dilated to nine. You're a preacher, brother. I don't care what anybody says. That's truth right there. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Scott is a proclaimer. You can see it. You can feel it. I look around and I see some of you are dilated to seven, to eight, with a gift or a talent or an ability that God wants to use in service for Him. And it's time that God wants to birth this through you and into the world. But you know what? A lot of people think, well, Pastor Rob, if it's, if it's really God's will, then God will make it happen. I just have to sit back here and, and, and do nothing. Wrong. It doesn't work that way. And here's the proof. We can see this in the Christmas story. Yes, it was God's plan. God came to Mary and Joseph and said, Hey, you're going to have to accept this change that's coming. Okay, we got that, Lord. You're going to have to obey me and walk through this change that I'm going to bring into your life. Okay, Lord, I'm on it. Mary, you're going to have to birth something into the world. Okay, I'm on it. But when the time came to bring it into the world, God stepped back. Mary's the one that had to push. If God's going to birth something through you, then you got to push. Sometimes you got to push through depression. Sometimes you got to push through your addictions. You got to push through whatever's holding you back. You've accepted the change. You've welcomed it. You're obeying God. You're trying to follow through with it. But when it comes time to give birth to it, you're pregnant with it. And it's so full in you and it's kicking and stirring in you. That's when God steps back and says, You got to push. It's up to you to push through everything that's holding you back. Spiritually speaking, 
And the Holy Spirit, he's like a Lamaze coach. He's standing next to you and he's got a firm grip on your hand, Sister Marcy. And he's saying, you got this. You've got this. This is mine. Push, push. The Holy Spirit will be right there with you the whole time until it comes forth into the world. And sometimes you and I as believers, when we're pregnant with something that God has put into our heart in our life that he wants to bring into the world and he knows it's time and he's telling us to push, you're going to hear another voice in your head. And that's going to be the voice of the enemy. And the voice of the enemy is going to say, you know what, there's still time. You don't have to give birth to this thing. You can have an abortion. You can abort this. So many times I've seen believers some come so close to moving and pushing through what God has called them to do. And at the last minute, they ignore their Lama's coach. They shrink back and they abort what God has put in their life. This is where we have to be obedient. To God. Because it could be big things. It could be things like ministries in the church. But it could be the, something like talking to your neighbor. And sharing the gospel with a co-worker. It could be something simple like that. Big things, little things that God wants to birth through us. We have to choose to keep the change by accepting. Being obedient. Giving birth pushing when it's time to push. Amen. Mary's confusion and reluctance was for a reason that was very personal to her. She heard the call. She saw the angel of God. She heard the words of the angel saying that she had been selected out of all of the women in the world. God found favor with her and chose her to bring the Son of God into the world. But she was still confused. And the answer to why is in verse 34. Luke 1.34. I'm sorry. Yeah, Luke 1.34. Thank you. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. You know what? This story is my story. Because when God called Linda and I to start a church, and God says, I want you to be a pastor, Rob. You know my testimony. I fought that my whole life. I didn't want anything to do with that kind of stuff. My dad was a pastor. I saw what pastors went through, and I saw things that a kid shouldn't see. Sometimes kids shouldn't see the back door of the church because we learn to identify hypocrisy very soon in our life, early. And the enemy uses that through our rebellious years to turn us away. When God says, Rob, I've called you not only to preach, I'd never preached. My first sermon was the first week we had church. I call on you to pastor, but Lord, I'm a virgin. How can this happen? I've never done anything like this before, God. This is where Mary's confusion was. She had questions. I had questions. You have questions. We've all got questions. How can this happen? And the enemy will say, whisper in your ear, you can't do this because of your past. You can't do this because you're still addicted. And just nobody knows about it. The enemy will whisper all these things in your ear to get you to abort that birth. But Mary... How can this be? For I am a virgin. We may feel God's calling. We may know that the Holy Spirit had breathed this into us, telling us all He wants to birth through us, but sometimes, like I said, that louder voice from the enemy is causing us to say, well, you can't do it, Rob, because you have all those years as a drug addict. You have no credibility, buddy. Remember all those other times when you're caught being religious, when you're just sitting in the pew and everybody found out? 
Remember that, Rob? You can't do this. You can't stand before people and have any credibility. God's not going to let you do that. This is your own voice. This is what the enemy does to us. And I hear the Holy Spirit of God. I'm on the birthing table and he's squeezing my hand saying, don't listen to him, Rob. I have called you to do this. I am going to birth this through you. And this is a key for every one of our lives. We have to have more faith and trust in God than we do in ourselves. Amen? We need to believe the source of that still small voice in our heart telling us to do this. Now, here's the key. Look at Luke 1.35. The angel replied, here we go. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of of the Most High will overshadow you. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Did you catch that? The Holy Spirit will come upon you. You know what that means? He says the power of God will overshadow you. That means, in other words, it's not about us. It's not about our gifts and our talents. It's not about what we want or what we don't want. When we trust God to birth this thing through us, all we have to do is say, I can't, but I know you can. So you could turn me into anything that you want, God. I have a willing heart. I choose this day to follow you. If God's planted the seed inside you, God will make it grow until it's time to give birth. That's when he'll take hold of your hand and he'll help you push through it. Mary had to push through it. I know you have doubts. I know you have insecurities. I know you have fears. I know you have commitment issues. But I'm telling you, if you're willing to birth what God has planted in you, then He will make a way. And I have never had God make a way for anything in my life that wasn't value added. Amen. This is our God. Amen. This is the story of Christmas. So, One of my favorite Bible verses, the last one we're going to read today, Luke 1.37. This is what the angel told Mary that stopped her confusion and her doubt. Underline verse 37. Here we go. For the word of God will never fail. This is what we need. This scripture is what we need. Underline it in your Bibles. Write it on your hearts. Because this Bible verse will bring you through every fear, every doubt that you ever will have in your life. If we know that we know that we know that the Word of God will never fail, that it's truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as we teach the kids to say, and we write that on our heart, this will lead us to the fourth and final step that we have to go through in keeping the change that God makes in our life. And that fourth step is be willing to see it through all the way to the end. Just like salvation is not the end of something, it's the beginning of something. Mary giving birth to Jesus wasn't the end of something, it was the beginning of something because Mary knew that Jesus would grow up. Mary knew that he would end up having to give his life to atone for the sins of the world so that mother would have to stand and watch her son be ridiculed, beaten, and crucified. Because she knew the word of God will never fail. I'm sure she thought back as she's watching her son dying on the cross she was thinking back, I'll bet you, like moms do. She was thinking back to her little boy when he was at home and she was teaching him the basics of life. 
And she thought back to the angel and how the angel told her the very thing that she had written on her heart, the very thing that the angel told her that changed her heart, relieved her confusion and doubt, that God's word will never fail. And the Bible says that she's told the angel, be it for me as you say. In other words, I go and I do this willingly. This verse we need to write on our hearts. I want to share one more quick thing. When you're on your computer and you're making a document, okay, you get a document that comes up and you read it and you think, wow, there's a lot of flaws in this document. I need to make changes to this document. So you can write the new words in. You can change and correct the spelling in the... And the, all the things that need changed in the document. But here's the key. You could spend hours working on that document, polishing it up, writing all the new things changing what needs to be changed and you look at it and if you don't keep that change by hitting save the document will default back to its original condition this is where you and i as christians are the four steps except that in keeping the change that god wants to make in our life accept the change obey the directions for the change. Amen? The third step is to be willing to give birth to something God wants to bring into the world through you. And the fourth step is be willing to see it through all the way to the end, even to crucifixion. If we don't save the changes to our document, they will default back. If you say, yes, I accept it, Lord, and you plan on keeping the changes that God makes in your life, you have got to keep the changes. Right. I have to keep the changes. Otherwise, if I don't, then I'll keep going back and forth, back and forth. Some Christians will, will go back and they come to church and they feel, oh God, I hear your calling and I come up to this altar and I want to accept the change and I want to keep the change. And they, they make a commitment to God, but they leave this place. And because they don't have any plan for that fourth step to see it through, they don't save the changes and they default back to their old life. They go back to their old habits, back to their old sins, back to their old ways of thinking. And this is what God wants to deliver us from. <laughs> Are we willing to keep the change? I'll tell you what. This is what the story of Christmas is all about. Especially in that year. Leading up to it. Let's stand. When I was in California, my mom said, I've been watching you on the YouTube. <laughs> and she says, there's something that moms notice that some people don't other notice. She goes, you wipe your nose a lot and wipe it on your pants. <laughs> so she said, I saved one of your dad's handkerchiefs for you. <laughs> so when I accepted the change, my mom says, I've never washed it. My first thought was snot. Oh my goodness, you've never watched it. But then I remembered the tears. A lot of them for me that went into this thing. Hallelujah. Father God, I love you with all my heart. And I pray, oh Lord, that your will be done in all of our lives that we will choose to keep the change.